Welcome back to the second part of this course, where we are going to learn how to create Instagram carousel design in Photoshop that stands out from the crowd. In part one we understand what carousels are and why they are an important form of content to make your audience engaged. In this part, we are going to learn how to create your own unique style and setting up Instagram carousel template from scratch. Before we begin, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss my upcoming videos. All project files are available to download in the description below. I have also included a timestamp into the description, just in case you want to skip ahead. Let's get into the video. As we learned what are Instagram carousels, how they can be good content to boost your engagement, and how to use AIDA to present your carousel designs in a structured way to deliver the message. Let's learn how to create your own unique style that can make you stand out from your competition. Make sure you watch till the end as I am going to share good tips you can use in your designs. What's the first thing comes to your mind when you see red and yellow color? I am sure you think of McDonald's, as these are their brand colors. The consistency in their brand designs made you memorize them, and that is the power of creating your own unique style. Know your brand, and choose the colors wisely. I have made carousels about how to choose a color for your brand and what color means what, on my Instagram. I'll leave their link in the description below. It's always a good practice to choose only two to three colors maximum in your carousel designs. Typography is something that can make or break your brand message. Font vibes matter a lot, let's look at the example. I have written the same thing in two different fonts. One sounds obvious but the other means totally different. And that is what fonts can do to your designs. So choose the right font for your design that people can understand your message with clarity. For carousels, use two fonts at maximum, one should be used as a heading, and the other for body text. You can play with the font weights, as per design needs. When designing carousels, we need to make sure of the readability of the fonts. Keeping your heading 80 plus points, and body text 30 plus points is a good readable size. Images and videos are a great source to keep your audience engaged, and relatable as the study proves to have interactive elements that can boost your engagement. There are different styles people choose to use in their carousels like images, illustrations, 3D illustrations, vectors. You decide what goes with your designs best. You can download free images and illustrations from various websites. These are few basic design guides you should follow when designing, but there is no hard and fast rule for this. Do not limit your creativity. Just design and put your content out there. Before we actually create the template, let's talk about what should be the size for Instagram carousels. Instagram crop the images from the center. No matter what dimensions use, it is always going to be cropped from the center and will show up as a 1 to 1 ratio in your Instagram feed. But once you actually open the post it will show you its right size. There are two sizes of carousels that creators love to work with. One is square, which is 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels. And another one is a vertical carousel, which is 1080 pixels by 1350 pixels. We have come to an end with our slides here, now let's jump onto the computer and start creating the Photoshop template. Make sure to like this video, and subscribe to my channel. We are now in Photoshop, there are two methods to create template files. The first method is artboards, and the second one is the slice tool method. Let's take a look at them one by one. So to create a template with an artboard, create a new document, name it whatever you want, keep the size 1080 pixels by 1350 pixels. These are the dimensions for the vertical carousel, if you want to keep the square layout then keep the size 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels. Make sure you click on this checkbox, to enable the artboards. 
then in a resolution keep it to 300 dpi, and 16 bit to make sure we get the highest possible resolution when we upload it on Instagram. It will create a new artboard, click on the artboard and you will see plus signs around the artboard, by clicking on them it will create a new artboard in any direction you select. Then you can click and drag, and align it to the left. This will add a second artboard to your document. We can also duplicate the artboards by hitting, Ctrl J on your keyboard, or by holding Alt on the keyboard and drag the art while holding it. Next, go to view, then click on new guide layout, then enter the following values. This creates a 100 pixels margin, across all four sides and will add guides around. Here comes an important step, in the target drop down, select all artboards, this will add same guides on all artboards. Go to view once again, to add a new guide layout, this time disable columns, and in rows add 2, and in gutters, value adds 2000. Uncheck the margins. If it is selected as we do not need margin this time. Make sure you select, all artboards, in the target drop down. The process is absolutely the same to have it for all 10 slides. The only issue, I see using artboard is, you need to put a little bit of extra time and effort to make sure if you want to create swipeable elements in artboards. For example, if I want to have a circle on artboard 1, that continue to artboard 2, I will have to have two circles to place on both artboards. I will also have to make sure and align its position manually to make sure design, consistency, and continuity. Now we have come to the other method. I find this comparatively easy than using artboards, and I always use this method. So let's jump in. I often get this question all the time, how do we make sure that design, does not get pixelated and give us crisp results? The best answer to this is, increase the document size, if you want to have clear results. It does not mean you will not get the results by keeping the required size by Instagram. But if you keep the size bigger, and when Instagram decreases the size, it will not go blurry. With that said, let's create an Instagram carousel template using the slice tool. To make sure we get the highest quality results, for the width we are keeping it 2000 pixels and height 2500 pixels instead of 1080 pixels, by 1350 pixels. We are making this template for 10 slides, we need to multiply its width by 10. So we will keep the total width 20,000. Make sure the artboard option is not checked, and name the file, as a master template. Go to view, and new guide layout. Disable rows, and in the columns section, add 10, leave everything blank to create 10 columns on your canvas. Now select slice tool, if you cannot find it, click and hold on crop tool on your left tools panel, type C on your keyboard for a shortcut, and if you don't see the slice tool, enable, press shift plus C, to toggle between the tools. While selecting the slice tool, go to the top panel, and click on, slices from guides. This will divide the canvas, into 10 equal slides. Now let's add some safe area guides to make sure when we design, go to view, and add a new guide layout, and add the following value. Let's add one last guide that will, this will help us, to see the 1 to 1 ratio aspect that is going to appear on the Instagram feed. Repeat the same step to add a new guide layout, and this time only add rows with the following values. Now if we add a rectangle with 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels, and align it to the center of the first slide, which is the area that is going to be displayed on your Instagram feed. We are done with the guides, now it's time to structure the template. 
Unlock the background layer, change the name to background. Add a new rectangle of 20,000 pixels by 2,500 pixels, and add any color you want this to be. If you decide to keep your carousel background one color, you can give that color. Select these two layers, and group them in a group called background. I usually keep this locked, to avoid any distractions. You can also add a new solid layer with your desired color, to achieve this. Next, we are going to make the branding, you may ask what is it, let me show you what I mean. Select the type tool and let's add my name and username, this could be anything you want, I usually use my name, username, sometimes my logo, service I offer like, branding and marketing. Then I use some, visual elements to ask the reader to swipe. Again this is totally up to you, if you don't want anything there, that is absolutely fine and you can always skip this step. I am aligning them on the guides we made, now you will see the real use of guides. These guides gonna help you to create your design aligned and balance. I use two font sizes here, for the small I use 8 points, and for the big, I use 11 points. It works well with my current carousel size, you can change and see what works best for you. Now we need to copy these branding elements, on all of our slides except the last slide. We will change the wordings there. Group these all layers, and name it S1. You can keep it whatever you like to keep. Hit Ctrl J, on your keyboard, to duplicate the group. Double click on the group or change its name to S2, so we know, this is on slide 2. Repeat this process to copy and paste them on all of the slides. When you reach the last slide, change the wordings to, like, share, and comments, or any personalized message, or design elements you want to add. It's really your design choice. Once all 10 slides are done, select all these groups and group them together by hitting, Ctrl G, on your keyboard, and name it, Branding. You can also lock this to avoid any distractions, and keep them above all layers or groups, as you want them to appear on top of your designs. We are almost done with the template, next, select the type tool, and write a dummy headline. Group this layer and name it, cover slide and make sure you keep this below branding group. As usual, there are a lot of things that happen on the cover slide, so we keep it in a separate group to stay organized. I also do the same, for all of the slides, so if I want to locate any item, I can do that easily, and is also good practice to stay organized in your design documents. I name them slide 2, slide 3, and the last one I say, the last slide, you can name them as you want. The next thing I do on my template is to make my last slide ready, this always helps me to speed up my design process. It's always a good practice to ask your audience, to take some sort of action, in your last slide. Remember, that Aida principle, this slide is used for action, I usually ask my audience a question, as this starts the conversation between me and my audience. You can always have whatever you want. We are done with the template. Before I show you, how to save this file as a template, so every time you open the template file, you will open up with this template as an unsaved file, which you can resave after you are done with your design. I would like to share some tips, that will help you to speed up your whole design process. You may be thinking what, if I want to have a different background on some of the slides. The simple answer for this is, just go in a relevant slide folder, and create a new rectangle there and keep whatever color you want to have. If you are going to add some continuous composition as your background, you should always work on a background group and add all of the compositions there, and in your slides folder only use text or any additional elements. I always have additional design elements open separately in Illustrator, that I click and drag them into Photoshop, according to my design needs. These small tips, will really help you to speed up your design process.
Now, let's save this file as a template file. Go to file, then click on save as, it will ask you where do you want to save this, navigate to your desired folder, and in the file name field, type template.pstt. You can name whatever you want, but make sure after the name you type, pstt. This is a Photoshop template extension, that tells Photoshop, this file is a template. To demonstrate, let me close this file and open that file which we just saved as the template. Click on open, go to your folder where you saved the template file, and open that. You notice this will open as, untitled. This means now you can save it with the new name, after your carousel design is complete, and it will not affect the original template file. That's it for this episode, in the next episode we are going to actually make, Instagram carousel, using the same template and techniques we have learned so far. Don't forget to download the template file below if you want to follow along with the creation process. I hope you like this video, how I did it, let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends.